Hi, this is Shiva Rajaya from vitalcoaching.com and we are talking about sponsoring love in whatever way, shape or form. You know, I spent um, the last few months attending different Tantra festivals and conscious sexuality festivals. You know, that this is one of the core topics that I'm really interested in too and I'm coaching, I'm having um, events on, on that. I'm off, uh, you know, next week to Burning Man to teach uh, vital sex events over there. So um, what it means is that I am in an environment where there is lots of sensuality being shared between people. Uh, it doesn't mean orgies, you know, it doesn't mean whatever image you might be having in your mind that could be extreme, you know, it simply means that sensuality and sexuality, sexual energy is flowing in a way which is uh, a little bit freer than uh, it is usually in society. So one of the core dynamics that you will face when you are really in this kind of open space it is that you're going to start connecting with lots of people. You know, suppose that you are at an event and uh, you have like three, you're a guy and you have three women that you're interested in too. Okay? So, suppose that you connect, you start sensually connected with one of the women and then this woman starts connecting with another man and then those, this woman and this other man, uh, you see them getting intimate. So, at that very moment where you start witnessing this happening, um, you have two ways to go, two polarities or two general ways or emotional positions that you can take. The first one is to react, okay, react emotionally, like get angry, possessive, controlling, start putting this woman under some form of emotional pressure, emotional threat, okay. This is almost like the default um, reaction that people have in society. It's a jealousy trigger. So they are going to use their jealousy weapon at that moment to put the woman and the man under psychic pressure. Or they will react by simply pulling back, disappearing and coming back the following day to the woman with an emotional load, an emotional threat. I'm really pissed off with you. What you did yesterday, you know, you started uh, going and disappearing with that guy and I didn't like it. So, you have to understand one thing, it is that if you are doing it yourself, you need to be okay with other people doing it as well. Okay? You cannot get possessive with somebody when you are yourself enjoying the freedom. So, this double standard uh, idea and behavior that I see a lot in this kind of circle really strikes me because I see both men and women behaving in a very free way and then starting to claim one of their lovers or one of their partners or one of the persons they are attracted to. So, you know, to solve that there is, there is an attitude or there is a model that I think is really the model of the future. And it doesn't mean that you cannot play with jealousy, okay? You can play with that emotion as long as you own it. You can play with these things. But I have a feeling that the moment you start blocking love, or you start blocking and uh, uh, throwing some emotional threat on, on somebody because that person is engaging sensually with somebody else, then you are actually blocking their energy, and you are blocking the flow, and you are blocking the flow of love. So, another way to look at it, and another way to respond, you know, I talked about the two ways. The first way was to, to block the energy, to get angry, to get pissed off, to get jealous. The second way is to really sponsor that love when you see it happening. For instance, you have this woman that you were attracted to and she starts engaging with this other man. You can go to them and say something like, you know, it's really sweet and cute to see you getting all romantic and all turned on. I can appreciate the energy and I appreciate the love that you two are sharing and it's very precious to me to, to see it and to witness it. So if you are able to do that, which I agree with you, it's not easy for most people. It's not easy for most people, but the moment you are able to do that, it just opens a whole pathway of relating and reactions. When I do that, when I react like that to some romantic love that I see being shared, even if I'm attracted, even if I already connected with that woman, then I create a tribal connection with the man. It means that I, I validate him as a potential partner for the woman that I'm attracted to. 
I remove any sense of possessiveness and instead of doing that I pull back and hold space for the two of them. I sponsor their love. And the idea behind that is very simple and very clear. The reason why I do it like that, first it's because it makes me way happier. I find it's more authentic, it's more real, and also I open space, not just in them but inside of me as well. I open space, I open space for love, I protect love. That's my job. And that may, might be your job too. I protect love whether I'm in the core of that love or not. Even if I'm around, just witnessing it, it's still my job to defend that love that is happening between two people. You get the idea, right? So imagine, for instance, that you see a couple, you know, kissing on the bench somewhere in the park. What's your emotional reaction to it? How do you respond? Do you go to them and you say, you guys are so beautiful. It's amazing to see you so romantically in love. I admire you. I love seeing that. Or are you like getting jealous and why don't they go to their room or space or private space? Why do they have to do that in public? You know, what's your emotional reaction? Do you like it or do you attack it? So check out, check it out internally. And you will notice that if you are challenging them and you are obstructing their love, what you're doing is that basically you're killing love. You are destroying love instead of being a protector and a defender of that love. So this is not an utopia, you know. I'm not talking about something which is difficult to do or unpractical. I mean, it's not easy, but it, it is really within the realm or within the range of what's, what's possible. You know, there, are, there, are, there is a term that was defined uh, by a, you know, one of those polyamory communities, which is the term compersion. Compersion means feeling pleasure through the pleasure of another person. When I'm attracted to this woman and she's engaging sensually with another man, I have the power to experience the, pres the pleasure that she's experiencing through her. I have the power and the ability to experience her pleasure through the pleasure the pleasure that she's experiencing with that, this other man I have the power to feel it to experience it in my body and in my being and instead of blocking it instead of opposing it I want to invite it in and the good news the thing which is really impressive is that if you sponsor that love you will notice that the woman will come back to you because she feels safe with you she will feel secure she will feel like you are able to hold the space and there is something there which is juicy and exciting. So again, this is one of these patterns, you know, I'm not here to tell you what to do or how to respond. I'm just telling you that it is possible, it's within what is possible. And in this kind of environments, in these kind of situations, you know, where you are in group situations, spiritual contexts, um, I think we can grow to, a, to that type of octave, to that kind of, of behavior, because you don't like feeling emotional pressure from other people. If you have been hanging out with, suppose that again you are a man and you have been hanging out with this woman, had a nice connection, maybe you kissed a little bit you, uh, one evening and then the following day you start having another connection with somebody else. How does that make you feel when this other woman creates psychodrama around it and gives you her hard time? It's not fair. You didn't commit to anything. There's no commitment. There's no right for her to claim you. The fact that you shared some intimacy doesn't mean that you suddenly belong to her. So in this open space, it's important to be able to, you know, pull back and play with these emotions without adding the controlling element too much into the picture. And in my experience, that's probably the number one pattern that could radically change the level of energy in these events. Because if you sponsor love and everybody does it, then the energy is going to start rising to a whole new level of harmony and beauty. This means that, for instance, between men, we stand as brothers, as a tribal unit. If you see a woman sharing love with one of your brothers, 
one of your tribal members, somebody you would go to war with. That's a very powerful expression. And if you are here to defend that love, and imagine what it tells about the relationship that you have with that person. It's like, yes, brother, I can see that you are having fun, I can see that you are having pleasure, and I'm here to defend it. So if you are the only person doing it, of course it's not going to work. It's going to be very challenging because if you are, you know, if you are sponsoring love and everybody is challenging you back, then it doesn't work, of course. It needs to be some form of, you know, energy that is that is coming to the surface and really being expressed. And you have some tribes, you know, some places around the world where naturally people have started to to practice that. I think it's in Sikkim or Bhutan where um, you know a woman will have two or three husbands because they used to be travel, traveling a lot she needs to, be, to feel safe there was always a man at home and when the other one was going and traveling and there would always be somebody there for her so i don't remember where, where it is but there are um, uh, cultures where polygamy is a very natural thing to do and it's sustainable now we are not even talking about polygamy we're talking about just exchange of energy when there is no, not even a commitment so think about that. Sponsor love. Take care. Bye.